Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or the Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, I'm bringing you guys Week 7 Wide Receiver Rankings for Fantasy Football in 2020. In this video, we are going to be going over the top 32 wide receivers based upon my Week 7 rankings. We're going to discuss why I have them ranked where I do, given their matchups in Week number 7. So if at any point in this video you end up enjoying, you end up having a great time, please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below, because not only is it free, I put out content every single day to help you guys win that 2020 fantasy football championship and before we get all deep into this i'd like to give you guys a quick word from my friends and my sponsor over at overlaydfs.com overlaydfs.com also offers something different than the matchup shop this is the week seven shootout under the progressive games it is very simple all you have to do is pick five player versus player matchups who scores more fantasy points matt ryan or drew Brees, big ben or Ryan Tannehill, so on and so forth, and then order them in order of importance and how good you think they are going to do, because if the guy's at the top at five, you get the most points, lowest at one, you'd get the most points for that being correct. So you want to make sure the one you're least confident in is at the bottom. It's very simple. You can make a whole lot of money out of this. This is an $11 entry one, but there's uh, entries at every single price. First place gets $500 and top 10% wins $50. So make sure you guys check this out. OverlayDFS.com, link down below in the description. And we are back. Please make sure to check out OverlayDFS.com. Let's get right into it. Week 7 wide receiver rankings. We begin here with wide receivers 1 through 12 on the weekend. And coming in here at number 1, we have DeAndre Hopkins going up against the Seattle Seahawks. Now, I expect this game to be a very high-scoring game. Now, I don't think that the Arizona Cardinals are ultimately, in the end, going to be the victors in this one. But DeAndre Hopkins obviously had a real bad week last week up against probably the easiest matchup in the NFL, up against the Dallas Cowboys. Now, obviously, that's just one bad game. You can't really take that into account and demean DeAndre Hopkins. You kind of just have to hop over that one and forget that it even happened and just go ahead and play him up against the Seattle Seahawks. I expect a zillion targets in this one, a very high-scoring game where both teams are putting points up on the board, and that would involve DeAndre Hopkins. Hopkins being very involved in this offense, just like we have seen in the past aside from last week, but he did get a decent amount of targets. He just wasn't coming down with them. At number two, we have Devontae Adams going up against the Houston Texans in Houston. Devontae Adams is one of the better wide receivers in the NFL, and here a bounce back game for the Green Bay Packers after falling last week to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Tom Brady. I expect Devontae Adams to have a humongous bounce back week here up against the not so good Houston Texans defense. And number three, we have Julio Jones going up against the Detroit Lions. Now, Julio last week bent me over the table and stuck it inside of me because I was claiming that Julio Jones was still injured because he frankly hurt his hamstring, comes back and plays, hurts his hamstring again, and then he's hurt all week, and then he fucking plays, and then all he does is just slap up the opposing team. Julio Jones scored not one, but two touchdowns, and Julio Jones is one of those guys who doesn't score a touchdown on a weekly basis. You don't expect this motherfucker to find the end zone half of the week's Meanwhile, this man found the end zone twice in one game. It was unheard of. It's like the fucking discovering Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster. That was like Julio Jones scoring two touchdowns in one game. I don't expect that to happen again, but clearly he is healthy. And this matchup against the Lions is a very good one for Matty Ice and Julio Jones. And clearly the team looks much better after they fired head coach Dan Quinn. At number four, we have Tariq the Freak Hill going up against the Denver Broncos. Now, this isn't the greatest matchup. The Denver defense is all right. But I think that Tyreek Hill on a weekly basis, it's hard to rank him outside of the top five due to the immense amount of upside he has in this Kansas City offense on an offense with a quarterback who can throw the ball out of the stadium with a guy who could run so fast that he could probably run up the wall of the stadium, jump out, and catch the goddamn ball like he's Spider-Man or something. Tariq Hill is very, very good, and I expect a decently high-scoring matchup here from a showdown inside of the same division. At number five, we have Calvin Ridley going up against the Detroit Lions. Now, Calvin Ridley has had amazing games thus far this season, kind of like how we saw DeAndre Hopkins, right? He has one bad game, and people maybe, I would assume most people won't sell out on DeAndre Hopkins because he had one bad game, but people were quick to sell out on Calvin Ridley a couple of games ago when he played up against Green Bay and put up a goose egg. Now, this motherfucker is back in the hot seat, rolling, 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 riding dirty, scoring touchdowns, scoring a million fantasy points. And in this matchup up against the Detroit Lions, that I expect to be a higher scoring matchup on the week with two teams with a relatively bad defense. I like Calvin Ridley in this matchup. At number six, we have DK Metcalf going up against the Arizona Cardinals. Now, DK Metcalf couldn't go to train or not go to train, go to run a train on a defense last week because he was on the bye. He was just chilling at home, probably watching some. Netflix or doing whatever he does and this week he's back up against the Arizona Cardinals this is the perfect spot for the Seattle Seahawks to put up 7 million points the Arizona Cardinals are coming off of a short week 
They played on Monday. Now they're playing again on Sunday in the later game. But they're playing up against Seattle, who has been resting. They've been taking a nice nap the last week. So this is going to be a fresh, so clean DK Metcalf stomping of the Arizona Cardinals at number six. And number seven, we have Kenny G, Kenny Bones, Kenny Galladay going up against the Atlanta Falcons. While Matthew Stafford has looked so-so the last couple of games, I expect him to be able to put it on here up against the other guy named Matt, Matt Ryan, in this one. I think Kenny Galladay is so involved in this offense, the clear main piece of this offense in the past. It was kind of a 1A, 1B scenario with Kenny G as well as Marvin Jones, but Marvin Jones has been as faded as Snoop Dogg on a Tuesday night recently. He is just fading away, not looking too hot, and Kenny G has been looking very hot, super hot fire. I spit that, two and a half men. I watch that. Kenny Galladay up against the Atlanta Falcons coming in at number seven. At number eight, we have Stephon Diggs going up against the worst fucking team in the NFL in the New York Football Jets. I would rather rise a zombie from the dead than play a fucking corner on the New York Football Giants. They are so bad in the NFL, it is absolutely embarrassing. Stephon Diggs is going to torch these motherfuckers. He is going to light them on fire like the guy at the end of the Indiana Jones movie, the first one where the guy catches all on fire. That's what the corner is going to look like in this game. Stefan Diggs is on a roll. This man has been rolling through DBs like it's his job, and it is. This is the perfect spot for Stefan Diggs to slap up the Jets for the first half of the game. And then in the second half of the game, they're probably just going to be do si and Josh Allen's going to be trying to do 360s against the team because they are going to be beating the Jets by a zillion. At number nine, we have A.J. Brown going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ever since returning back from injury, A.J. Brown has been nothing but fantastic. You Google fantastic, this motherfucker's picture shows up. His mug shows up right on the screen. A.J. Brown is a beautiful bastard who has been balling all season long ever since coming back from that injury. And this week, he gets the Pittsburgh Steelers, which would arguably be a very tough matchup for the wide receiver position. And I do agree, this is a tougher matchup. But with how well Ryan Tannehill has played, with how how well A.J. Brown has played, you'd be very fucking stupid to not rank him inside of the top 10. And number 10, we have Michael Thomas, MT, going up against the Carolina Panthers. Now, right now, Michael Thomas' status of playing in this game is, I would say, 40%, in my opinion, the chance that he plays in this game. So go ahead and have him in your top 10 because if he does play the slant king, the slant god, Michael Thomas will be useful for fantasy football, but understand there's a chance that he ends up missing. So keep that in mind when you're setting your lineup on Sunday. I assume before Sunday or earlier on Sunday, we'll have a better idea if Thomas is going to play. At number 11, we have Allen Robinson, a Rob going up against the LA Rams and Jalen Ramsey in LA. Now, this is a very tough matchup for Allen Robinson, which I am a bit concerned about. Allen Robinson has been a touchdown machine and a scoring machine with 9-inch Nick Foles playing the quarterback back position so am I completely faded out on Al Robinson this week hell no that's why he's my number 11 wide receiver now I just realized that my my uh my camera's blocking everything so I'm gonna go ahead and move it up here Sorry about that, guys. At number 11, Allen Robinson, though, he has been a baller this season, like I said, and I have a lot of trust in Allen Robinson, and I actually believe he is going to have a very big game this week, even up against Jalen Ramsey. There's obviously worries about the corners playing so well there, but I think you have to take into account the extreme amount of targets he's going to get, so he should be fine to finish top 12 this week. And closing in on the top 12, we have TMC's Terry McLaurin scoring McLaurin going up against the Dallas Cowboys. Now, the Dallas Cowboys defense defense is the recipe for success for a wide receiver on the other team. Terry McLaurin is going to cook these guys up like his name was Gordon fucking Ramsey and spit them out straight onto the ground. All right, that was not a very good spitting sound, but Terry McLaurin is going to spit all over him, give him a good old spit roast, and Terry McLaurin has been playing quite well despite the quarterback woes there. Originally, Dwayne Trashcan Hashkins was playing, now it's Kyle Allen, and at one point, it was Alex Smith. But it doesn't seem to matter because of how shit this Dallas defense is. I expect nothing less than a huge one out of Terry McLaurin. Now on to wide receivers 13 through 24. So if you guys have happened to enjoy this video thus far, please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. We begin with number 13. At number 13, we have Keenan Allen going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now he is also a player that is kind of an unknown to play on Sunday. You would have to go ahead and wait until Sunday, but if he does play, this is a perfect matchup up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Horsecock Herbert coming in for a very solid matchup here up against the Jaguars defense. Keenan Allen has looked very good getting fed, force-fed the ball by Justin Herbert, the pervert, every single fucking time he's anywhere near open. If there is just a mere chance that Keenan Allen can catch the ball, Justin Herbert fires the fucking cannon right at him, and I think that he's in for a big spot here up against the Jaguars if he plays. At number 14, we have Chris Godwin going up against the Las Vegas Raiders, and Chris Godwin has been very disappointing thus far this season. 
Chris Godwin has not been very good at all recently. Just has not been. Tampa Bay, it's on. Brady just isn't feeding this guy the rock like I thought he would. This is a good matchup up against the Raiders defense. Not a great matchup, but an all right matchup for Chris Godwin. I think Godwin is going to have a bounce back game here. But I have told you guys in the trade talk video, if you guys watch that, to kind of just trade away Chris Godwin based on his name value because I just don't think he's going to return the value that you drafted him at at this point in the season based upon his injuries that keep happening as well as his production when healthy. We have at number 15, Will Fuller, the man who's been baptized into the system of not getting injured and actually being safe as a safe play on a weekly basis in the NFL, and he is going up against the Green Bay Cheesehead Bastards this week. Now, the Packers' defense looked like burnt fucking toast last week up against Tampa Bay, so I'm Brady and friends in Tampa Bay. Will Fuller here has been very consistent thus far this season. Will Fuller is the opposite of consistency. This guy would get red hot and then cool down icicle style and be completely dog shit and then fire back a couple weeks and be on fire again. He was very hot and cold. Yes, and he was no. He was in, then he's out. He was up, and he was down. And you were very confused on if you wanted to start Will Fuller or not. And recently, he has been a guy that is the definition of consistency. So I believe in Will Fuller now being that safe guy for the Houston Texans. I'm continuing to fire him out as a top 20 wide receiver. At number 16, we have Robbie A. Robbie Anderson, the slender man, the stick man, going up against the New Orleans Saints. Now, I didn't think coming into the season that he would be the guy that he is, but it seems like Teddy Two Gloves, Teddy throws a belt, Teddy B loves to throw the ball to Robbie the stick man. Anderson. Robbie Anderson has been balling out of control and fucking on all of them hoes as Drake slash Future says in that song from a couple of years ago and Robbie Anderson's consistency has been unreal off the goddamn charts and I like him this week up against the New Orleans Saints. Number 17, we have Amari Cooper going up against the Washington football team in Washington. He'd probably be a top five wide receiver if they had Dak Prescott this week, but instead they have the Red Rocket Andy Dalton, which is scary. Very scary, because Andy Dalton looked like a used fucking condom out there. That's about how useful he was. I was surprised fat-ass Mike McCarthy didn't roll out there and try to throw some dimes, because he probably would have been better than Andy Dalton. Someone needs to call up Mr. Muhammad Sanu, the dime thrower, originally from Atlanta. That dude is a better quarterback than Andy Dalton at this point, but I expect Andy Dalton to have a bounce-back game, and I think Amari Cooper will still be useful, considering the fact that they are just getting spanked all game long, and later in the game, they just have to ru- they have to just throw the ball every fucking time. At number 18, we have Robbie W. Robbie Woods going up against the Chicago Bears. This is a tough matchup for Robert Woods. He's been very good thus far this season. Kind of the wide receiver we drafted him to be. So no real slander on him, ranking him outside of the top 12. This is a tough matchup, so that's why he's ranked here. Number 19, we have Tyler Lockett going up against the Arizona Cardinals. Now, right now, Lockett should be fine, but there is definitely worries that Antonio Bizzle, AB, rolls into town next week and steals all of Tyler Lockett's fucking lunch money and all of DK Metcalf's lunch money and becomes the number one wide receiver on the team. Now, right now, this has no effect on anything because we are in week number seven, not in week nine when he can actually play for a team or whenever he's going to get added to a team. This season has been a complete and utter two tails of Tyler Lockett's life. The half part of the season, the free getting of the season, I should say, this motherfucker was balling out of control, just slapping defenses on the ass as he ran by him. And then the last couple of weeks, this guy has been fucking abysmally bad. So bad that you don't even want to start him. This week, he gets the Cardinals. I expect a bounce back game here for Tyler Lockett. At number 20, we have Cooper Cup here up against the Chicago Bears. Again, this is going to be, in my opinion, a low scoring game, a closer kind of game where I think a lot of running is going to, to occur. Two solid defenses in the NFL, so I am a bit worried about Cooper Cup. That's why I got him at 20. At 21, we have Mike Evans going up against the Las Vegas Raiders, and Tampa Bay Tom Brady just hasn't been really airing it out like he had been in the past. I mean, not that he has been airing it out a lot in the past, but like I kind of expected in this offense, Bruce Arians has went full 180, and instead of throwing the ball 7 million times, they actually like to run the ball with Ronald Jones and friends in Tampa Bay, and Mike Evans is really touchdown dependent at this point, so I am a bit worried here up against the Raiders, but I wouldn't be surprised if he just balled the fuck out, if I'm being completely honest with you. At number 22, we have Odell Beckham Jr. going up against the Cincinnati Bungles. Now, Odell Beckham Jr. has been straight up hit or missed this season. He's had really good games, and then he has games that are like nine points, and you're feeling very sad that you put him in your lineup. This week, up against the Cincinnati Bengals, week number two, he had his second best game of the season on Thursday Night Football up against the Cincinnati Bengals because those DBs are sorry ass. Don't put no sorry ass wide receiver on me like Michael Crabtree. That's what Richard Sherman said a couple of years ago. Very funny clip. If you haven't seen that, look that up. Don't put no sorry ass wide receiver like Michael Crabtree on me. 
Odell Beckham Jr. is up against some sorry-ass cornerbacks in Cincinnati, and I think he'll put up a solid game here. At number 23, we have DJ Moore going up against the New Orleans Saints. Now, DJ Moore has not lived up to my expectations on this season, like I talked about with Robbie Anderson, but he hasn't really been a complete bust right on your face like your name was Remy LaCroix. It has more of been like kind of just a slow teasing of you, right? 12 points, 15 points, 18 points, 10 points, where he's never really busted, but he's never really, he's just edging, I guess, because he hasn't completely busted and screwed you over, but he hasn't had the games that you thought DJ Moore could have. So he's still an all right wide receiver for fantasy football, which is why I got him at 23, but he just hasn't had that big game, and I would be surprised, honestly, if he had more than one this season. And closing out the top 24, we have Wiki Wiki DJ Moore, or not DJ Moore, Wiki Wiki DJ Chark, do 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 baby Chark going up against the Los Angeles Chargers in LA. DJ Chark is the focal point of this Jacksonville Jaguars offense, and while he hasn't been amazing this season, when he's healthy, he does look like the main target on the team. The reason why Gardner Minshew plays good or bad is 100% determined on if DJ Chark is healthy and playing well. So I think DJ Chark here up against the Chargers, and all right defense, puts up a solid week. Nothing groundbreaking, but nothing too bad for Mr. Baby Chark. And now on to wide receivers 25 through 32. So again, if you guys have had a great time watching this video, please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. At 25, we have C.D. Lom going up against the Washington football team. And last week, when they played up against the Arizona Cardinals, I thought C.D. Lamb was going to be making the Cardinals C.D.'s nuts, and he did not do that at all. He was getting a lot of targets, which is good for fantasy, but he wasn't scoring the touchdowns, wasn't getting those big burst yards of play or yards that he was kind of getting with Dak where he'd be wide open deep down the field and the guy actually throws it to him, whereas Andy Dalton couldn't fucking hit you if you were standing five feet in front of him. So CD Lamb here, this is a solid matchup for him, but I do worry about the quarterback play, which kind of retracts him out of the top 25. At number 26, we have CC. Do you love me? Chase Claypool going up against the Tennessee Titans. Now, Chase Claypool has been unreal. Frankly, unreal. You would have never seen this coming. And don't lie to me that you're like, oh, I love Chase Claypool coming out of college. He was going to have a breakout year this year. No one in their right fucking mind thought this year was the year for Chase Claypool, but it is. Big Ben and him have some love affair out there. Juju Smith-Schuster is too busy doing the fucking renegade on TikTok to give a fuck about the game. So Chase Claypool has been balling out of control, and I expect another big game from Mr. CC. Do you love me? Chase Claypool up against the Tennessee Titans. At number 27, we have Tyler. Yeah, Boyd going up against the Cleveland Browns this week. Tyler Boyd and Titty Boy T. Higgins have been tag-teaming that defense with the power of the Eiffel Tower. They just have the defense in the middle, and both of them, one's got the ass, the other's got the mouth, and they are balling. Tyler Boyd has been very good thus far this season. A.J. Brown, or not A.J. Brown, A.J. Green's just a cuck cranking it on the sideline watching this happen. Tyler Boyd has played so well thus far this season. This is going to be another good game up against the Browns like he had to really start off his season to start playing well up against the Browns in week number two. At number 28, we have Jameson Crowder, the Crowder and Nathan. Get to the chopper. Do it now. Crowder. <laughs> My uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger voice is so bad, but I still think it's funny, so I do it every single time. So Jamison Crowder, the Crowder and Nata, gets Sammy Mono. Mono Man Sam likely playing on Sunday, so that's better than Joe Cool. Cool Joe. Joe Flacco sucks. This motherfucker up against my Dolphins took a 35-yard sack, I think. Maybe it was even more. It might have been a 38-yard sack. This man has no idea. He's just cashing a check, getting the bag to play for the Jets. He loves that moolah just like I do. And Jamison Crowder is going to get you that moolah when he plays quite well this week up against the Buffalo Bills. At number 29, and he's even on like the shittiest team in the NFL, but he just gets so many targets in this Adam Gase system. At 29, we have Mikey Mike Williams going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. And Mike Williams had a coming out party two weeks ago before his bye week, or the week before his bye week, I should say, in week number five because they had a bye last week up against the New Orleans Saints. He was making catches that looked amazing. Even the announcer said it was like a 50-50 ball thrown to Mike Williams is a 100% chance because this man just does crazy things with his hands. So I like Mike Williams. He had a stu uh, not a tough start to the year because he was banged up early in the year, but he didn't really start off strong like I thought he would. But I think in a couple of weeks right now, 
from here on out, we are going to see Mike Williams play up to the potential that I thought he had. At number 30, we have Titty Boy T. Higgins up against the Cleveland Browns. Now, T. Higgins has been amazing this year. A.J. Green has fallen off the face of the fucking earth like what Columbus thought would happen if you got anywhere near the side of the earth because he thought the earth was fucking flat, which is actually true because it is flat. But T. Higgins is a goddamn baller. This guy has been playing so well as the number one or number two guy on the team, depending how you kind of think about it. I personally think Boyd is the number one in talent, but Higgins has been getting Honestly, he's been playing better than Tyler Boyd, so I wouldn't even be surprised if you flip the two in your rankings. I like both of these guys a lot. They're, they're in the top 32. Sure, you might say, oh, that's not the greatest ranking, but they both have a whole lot of upside here. Up against the Browns, at number 31, we have TikTok star Juju Smith-Schuster, who legitimately has had one good game this year and hasn't done shit the rest of the season. This week, up against the Tennessee Titans, I am very worried that this man has went full-on Hollywood. Now, I'm not someone to attack a guy's character. I'm some asshole who talks about fantasy football on the internet, but I don't know about Juju. I really do not. I feel like he is not giving a fuck about football, and then a couple years from now, when he wants to get that extension, when he wants the big money, he's going to realize, damn, I fucked up. I should have been trying harder. I don't, I'm not saying that he doesn't try hard or something, but he's just not being involved in this offense. I don't know what the fuck is happening. He's not doing good in fantasy football, so I don't recommend him being very good this week. And to close out the top 32, we have Brandon Cooks going up against the Green Bay Packers. Brandon Cooks has been very good the last two games. At the beginning of the season, this guy was atrocious. Didn't look good at all. Kind of another case of a two parts of the season. You know how I talked about how Lockett at the beginning was balling? And now he kind of sucks. Brandon Cooks was doing the opposite. He was sucking fucking fat hog for free. And then, or not for free, because he gets paid millions of dollars. And then recently, this guy is a sex drive push to start or something. And he's been balling out. So I like Brandon Cooks here up against the Green Bay Packers. But I do worry about a situation where now we're finally bought in on Brandon Cooks. Right after weeks of him bending you over the table and inserting it into you relentlessly. Right? And now you're finally bought in. You saw it for two weeks. Then he screws you in the ass. But I'm going to believe this week, Brandon Cooks has been very involved. This Houston Texans team looks pretty solid. Now, I understand they only have one win. They're like the worst, best team in the NFL. They have a shitty record, but in my opinion, they have the best chance of putting up a good game up against a solid team, and that's going to be the case here up against the Packers. I think Brandon Cooks puts up a solid game here. So thank you guys all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If at any point inside of this video you did end up having a great time, please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. I would really appreciate that. Make sure you guys check out OverlayDFS.com. Link down below in the description. Have a great rest of your guys' day, and I'll see you beautiful bastards later with another banger of a video. Good boy!